Well, it's the first four for the NCAA tournament, and it's the final four in high school boys basketball action. Welcome inside the UD Arena for our Charles River State Wrap-Up Show. Thank you for joining us here on WOSN. Patrick Hamler, Danny Holbrook, Mark Schein as we wrap up. Well, portions of our coverage, uh, Ottawa Glandorf playing today and the OG Titans uh, traveling another trip to state for head coach Tyson McLaughlin, and we're going to break it down for you. And first of all, before we get into the highlights, we'll show you their game against Afrocentric. Mark, first of all, you know, what a terrific season OG's put together. Well, that certainly is. Obviously, their league championship to the conference, they just played extremely well throughout the season. They've got a very talented sophomore and a crew of eight guys around him, experienced coaching, great fan base. It has been a good year to be a Titan. And you know, Danny, that experience is also playing a factor in here as well. They've got the youth. Colin White, only a sophomore, has had a terrific season. But they've got guys around him that are no stranger to this. And also, head coach Tyce McLaughlin's been here a couple times. Oh, absolutely. And I said earlier today, I said, you got to have multiple ways to score when you get to this level. And they can do it all. They can knock down perimeter jumpers. They can go inside. They've got height. They've got quickness. They're the complete package. And opportunity to show off that complete package today as they took on Columbus Afrocentric, the Nubians, uh, with a chance to go back to the state championship. And we take a look at the highlights of that one right now. What a contest this was going all the way down to the end. Colin White getting announced as OG got started. It would take a while for the Titans to really get going in this one. However, it will be Colin White early on. The pull-up jumper rolls in. White was huge in the first half. Well, he was huge throughout the basketball game, but particularly in the first half when he had so much trouble trying to score the basketball, and he was able to put points on the board as we see right there. Almost single-handedly creating offense for the Titans as they had some droughts. Some droughts. They would go almost seven minutes of game time before they'd be able to score. Here is Caleb Kuhlman with the floater. He gets that one to go in. And they made great adjustments in the second half, not only offensively, but defensively, taking away the dribble drive lanes. They took away the passing lanes and did a great job of protecting the rim. Theo Mag with the put back there, generating some offense from turnovers. Some good rebounding, too. You see White with their the put back. They crashed the boards quite a bit. Well, too. they out rebounded Afrocentric 37 32 and 13 10 on the offensive glass. I think that was surprising to Afrocentric. And those 13 offensive rebounds often generated points. Dalen Swain for Afrocentric having a huge game. Had them up by as many as 11 points in the second half. They, he, was, he was a handful, had 32 points for them tonight. Yeah, he was fantastic. He is everything you want in a player. He's got length, he's got size and speed, can knock down the jumper, and he's a really smart player. Gets to the rim when he knows it's important. Colin White had a block, you saw it there earlier, and then a slam, putting that one down, Preston Steele. That would give them a 10-point lead, but OG comes back. White from the three, bringing them within seven. Trouble shooting in the second half, but the Titans really picked it up in their second well, half. They really did, particularly in quarter number four. Through the first three quarters, OG only scored on 14 to 46 possessions. They came out in quarter number four. They scored on the first six possession, put 12 points out there, shut out their opponent during that spell, and that 12-0 run was big. Colin White had 21 of his 31 points in the second half as he attacks OG down four, then down one after Caleb Coleman gets it. The corner three ball is good. Cut it to a one point lead. The momentum really shifted in the fourth quarter for the Titans. And the Titans defensively really, really shut them down in the fourth quarter. And they played really smart ball. They got to the line when they needed to. And, and listen, when you get to the line and the clock stops and the points go in, it's a plus for the Titans. And that, that just shows you the fallacy of stat pages. They gave Coleman one steal. He had two on back to back plays and he just ignited them there in the fourth quarter. He gets the layup there, and Ottawa Glandorf getting going. Afrocentric not going away, though. Swain with the dunk to keep this one close. This one went back and forth, but Ottawa Glandorf able to hit some key jumpers there toward the end, the spin around. And they made OG go to the line, but OG, 56% shooting before the fourth quarter from the charity stripe. They were able to come away with the win. As they come from behind, they were down by as many as 11. Five-point victory over OG. You said White, 31 points, 11 boards, five blocks. Coleman chipping in 10 points, three rebounds. OG, White kept them afloat for the first three quarters. He really did. They were only able to put two total points on the board in quarter number two. Both of those were by him, but their defense was good enough. They gave up just 13 in the quarter, so they were able to hang in the game well enough to come back and win. Swain had 32 points for Afrocentric, but OG doing just a really great job defensively against these guys. Absolutely, and I'm going to say it again. Colin White showed you today why he is a top 100 recruit in the country. That young man put this team on his back, and they all did a great job, but when they needed points, they went to Colin White, and he delivered. Afterward, we heard from Colin White, head coach Tyson McLaughlin, and Caleb Coleman in the post-game press conference. 
You know, obviously, uh, just a phenomenal game, phenomenal atmosphere. It's after what everybody's been through for the last, you know, two years, it seems like, to, to be able to, to come back to the state tournament and uh, be here at UD Arena. It's such a, it's just an awesome place to play, a great environment. The place gets loud. Uh, but I think more importantly, to be able to experience that with our fans. You know, last year we were able to get down here. I uh, felt a little bit short, 600 fans, something like that for our, for our community. And as you can see from our fan base, that's not nearly enough. And uh, to be able to do that in this first game of the state tournament, for these guys to battle back, uh, it just speaks volumes for the character guys that we have. Uh, they continue to fight, they continue to grind, and you know it's always different guys on different nights. And uh, you know it just makes this group special. And very, very thankful to be able to move on to, to Sunday. It was kind of the turning point during that third quarter. It was down ten, and all of a sudden started to make some shots and get on a roll there. Well, when after Centric's very, very good defensively. Their length and athleticism was giving us some problems there. We got a little, I thought we got a little timid there in the second quarter, and I think we were one of 10 from the field, and you can't compete and, and beat good teams shooting one of 10 of the field. Uh, and I just thought, you know, we talked and kind of regrouped at halftime. Uh, we wanted to chip it, you know, get it down to, you know, four or five at the end of the third quarter. We thought that was realistic. Um, you know, this team, we shared the ball and attack, you know, and spread the floor so well. I felt confident that we were going to make a run. Uh, I just we we just knew that we couldn't dig ourselves any bigger of a hole, and uh, we hit a couple shots, got a little bit of momentum. Um, Colin kind of you know Colin Colin was Colin there for the entire game and was able to get us a couple buckets. But you know I think what separates this team, I, I use Caleb as a perfect example. You know moving him and Carson Fuca has been switching starting spots throughout the year, and uh, during the tournament run, Caleb's probably got a couple more of those stars, but those guys never wavered. You know it doesn't matter to those guys. We were struggling offensively, so we made the switch and put Carson there at halftime uh, to start the third quarter. And who comes out there and makes, you know, just takes over in the fourth quarter, and then, like he does, it doesn't bother him. You know, he cares about one thing, and, and, that, and that's winning. So just phenomenal job by him and, you know, the, the entire team. Coach, we come with massive momentum. We were able to extend the lead. You know, I think we had a foul shot there. there were, I think we could have went up one. I think we tied it. Um, and once we got the lead, I don't think they got it back, and I think that was huge for us. Um, there was a lot of 50-50 balls there where we weren't getting in the first half, and then in the second half we were able to find a way you know, to come down with those. And we told our guys, this is not going to be one of those pretty games. This is going to be one of those, you're going to have, you know, there's going to be skin on the floor, there's got to be some blood out there, and uh, for us to be able to compete against those guys, that's the kind of things that we had to do, and I just thought our effort level and our intensity you know, kind of you know, rose to the occasion there in the second half. Coach, obviously some great individual performances today on both sides. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to have a player who can sort of help carry you through those rough patches? Well, it takes a team to, you know, to compete at this level, but uh, you have to have that guy that you can say, hey, go out there and get us a bucket. And uh, Collins, that guy, you know, and, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, what, it, what he's put the time in. That's why, in my opinion, he's the best player in the, you know, the 2024 class. Sometimes we get overlooked being in Northwest Ohio, uh, but... Uh, when the stage is there and the lights are bright, the guy's on the floor and he's making plays. And, uh, you know, I think it's, that's a credit to him. But, you know, you go on the other end, Swain was making plays and, and doing his thing. And, you know, there's, there's a reason why he's getting the attention that he, that he has. It's well-deserved. That said about Swain, how hard is it to match up with a guy who's 6'8 and plays, plays on the wing? We don't have a lot of those running around at Ottawa Landorf. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, 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 it's tough, but, you know, it was a collective effort. You know, as well as Caleb plays on the defensive end, and usually he's guarding the other team's, you know, top guy. You know, what about Hunter Stexualty out there tonight? The guy comes in off the bench, and uh, in the second half there, he got a lot of minutes there in the second half. Just fully, his job was to, you know, pester and try to frustrate um, a Swain as much as he could, denying the ball, try to not let him get back. Um, and, and that's what it takes. You can't you can't just rely on one person to guard somebody that talented. You got to be able to throw fresh bodies on them. And you know between Caleb and you know Colin had a, had a run at him in the third quarter. And, and then Hunter, I just thought collectively, you know, in order for us to be successful, you know, it's got to be everybody. I'm coach, you talk. It's like uh, with you guys. It's not only with points. It's with defense. It's who's going to hey, hop on my back and let's go. Yeah, like I said all year, you know, we don't intend to intimidate anybody getting off the bus. You know, we don't win that battle, but uh, what, you, what you can't coach and what you can't uh, prepare for is the heart that these guys have. Um, playing for OG, playing OG, and playing OG basketball and having that name across the chest, that means something. And uh, these guys, kids, you know, you look in that crowd, you see those young kids in there and they're dreaming about being Caleb Kuhlman and being Colin Wyde and Hunter Stack, the list goes on. Um, 
I think our kids are built a little bit differently because I think it means a little bit more to them to, to be able to compete at this stage. Alan, you guys probably had to come from Brian once or twice this year to bet against a team of this caliber. What do you say to each other at halftime? Just to, just to attack and be aggressive. That's, you have to do it against a team like that. You can't be uh, intimidated and you have to keep attacking. Uh, you know, they blocked a couple shots in the second quarter and we got a little timid, but in the third quarter and fourth quarter we came out and uh, we were super aggressive and we got to the rim and I felt like uh, our aggressiveness paid off. Colin, for you specifically, when did that, I mean, was it from the tip, but when, when did that kind of sink in for you that you were gonna have a breakout night and you, know, you were gonna put up as many shots as you could? I thought, uh, you know, I could blow by my guy and get to the rim, but it, again, it's just all about going through contact. You know, they were they were physical down low, and the, the refs were letting us bang a little bit, but it's all about going through that contact and uh, fight, finding open places to drive and uh, make layups, and obviously I made a couple threes, and that opens up everything going to the rim. Caleb, there was a time right towards the end of the game, they missed a shot, you got five, you're going on, you had this kind of look like, it's ours now, is that what you're feeling at the time? Um, it's never over until it's over, but... Uh, I kind of knew we had the momentum, and I just wanted to keep it. I know Coach touched on it, but what was said amongst the players, Caleb? Just, I mean, obviously, you're one of the five seniors on the team. You know, what was said throughout that second half to keep, keep, keep fueling you guys to get back in the game? Um, we just weren't playing like ourselves. We were telling each other to play like we have been all year, and we just stuck to it. Caleb, it's no secret that out of Atlanta has a tremendous fan following. Driving down today, there's a billboard in Sydney, Ohio, wishing Adam Landor good luck. Having that type of fan base behind you, how does that help you in a game like this? Um, all the fans help. When it gets loud and we get the momentum going, it gives us a little boost on offense and defense, gives you a little more energy. I don't know, the fans help out a lot. How significant was getting three-point game going? Yeah, you know, that first half, I think we were 20. Uh, I know we were 1 of 10 in the second quarter. Um, we, we didn't shoot the ball well. In order for us to be successful, when we're at our best, we're able to get penetration, spread you out, and knock down some shots. You know, uh, probably four threes on the year might be the, the least amount we probably made all year. I, I'd have to go back and check that. But I think that was a credit to, to half percentage of really putting pressure on us and making us play a little faster than maybe we wanted to. Um, but oh, being able to hit that, especially Colin, as much attention that he draws, um, it was it was very important for him to, to hit a couple to, to make them respect that outside shot and again open up driving lanes. Opening up driving lanes for Colin means somebody's going to have to give some help. They're not going to play just straight one on one on him, and that opened up a couple shots for some other guys. For the guys here, uh, you've got some shots blocked right in the end. How do you put that behind you and just keep that aggressive attack going? I feel like you can't be intimidated. You know, they, they jump at everything. You know, they, they want to block shots. That's when you come in the paint, that's what they're going to do. They're going to jump and try to block it. But, you know, you, gotta, you just got to keep attacking and try to get it into their chest and uh, fight through contact. You know, the refs started calling a little bit there at the end, and that's what you got to do. You just got to jump into their body and kind of veer away, and hopefully they don't block it. Just don't worry about it. Kind of same. There was a moment there at the end of the game. You're holding your son, you shake your dad's hand. Three generations would go off to share that moment. You know, honestly, it gives me emotional, but as that is why I'm here, you know, and, and the missing pieces, you know, my mom passed away, you know, almost 20 years ago, and she was the biggest fan. And, you know, a lot of times I think about that, um, how special, how different things would be. Uh, but being able to share that with my son, my dad, it's, it's, a, it's a family, and there's, there's no doubt about it. What about a possible rematch in the finals with the I mean, thought that far, but you know, that, I think that'd be it would be phenomenal. You know, that both of these teams in this next game are, are tremendous teams. You got great athletes. Um, it's it's going to be similar to you know what we saw here. They're going to try to speed us up and you know try to take some things away from us. Um, we'll take the challenge of whoever we get. We don't we really don't care. We're just happy to see another day. We've got to get some guys some rest. We had a couple guys that were under the weather all week and uh, playing that first game is a blessing. <laughs> playing on Friday is a blessing for us to be honest with you. So uh, we're thankful. We'll get a good night's sleep, get uh, prepared tomorrow and uh, whether it's Lutheran East or Taft, uh, Taft Nation will be here. Speaking of that Tyson, what's the biggest thing you can take away from this game right in Sunday? Oh, biggest thing to take away from this game? Uh, just the resiliency, just the never quit. Um, you know, there's a couple times where, you know, I thought, 
you know, kind of had the deer in the headlight look, and you know, especially they got a steal there in the third quarter. Um, you know, we could have folded, but uh, like I said, all this year these, these guys are built different, and uh, this team's a little bit different. So um, just resiliency. Hey Tyson, you you said uh, on the radio back in January you had your showcase uh, where you brought teams in, and you you made a statement that you'd like to play some more. Uh, competitive teams just outside Northwest Ohio. Um, just talk talk about that just a, a moment about how that may have prepared you for today. Well, you know, we, we were able to play Harvest Prep in that game, and you know, obviously I'm biased being a Northwest Ohio guy, but some, I, I just think there's a lot of really good basketball players that get overlooked in Northwest Ohio, and I think, uh, you know, whenever we get an opportunity to, to showcase what our guys can do and, you know, bring some talent from across the state that our fan base doesn't get to see on a regular basis, you know, I, I think sometimes uh, we, we lose sight, you know, we, we see the same teams all the time, we don't realize how good teams and players are out there, and, you know, like I said earlier about Colin, that's no disrespect to any other player <coughs> Uh, out, out in the state of Ohio, but if Colin White was playing in Columbus or Cleveland, you know, the rankings and, you know, everything would be, you know, be a little bit different, you know, but, uh, you know, it's just a, an opportunity for our fan base who just loves basketball to see some of the top teams and players in the state of Ohio. Okay, any more questions? All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tyson. You know, we talked about community, talked about family, a couple of generations of McLaughlin's able to share in this. OG had huge community support. They were in force today at UD Arena. Well, they always are, Patrick. But the thing I really liked about it, the game comes to an end. Tyson's young son runs out and jumps into his arm. He hugs dad. He puts his son down and gets to hug his own dad, Kevin. What a great experience in the state semifinal to be generational like that. Yeah, and Coach Kevin McLaughlin getting the chance to watch his son coach a team in the state championship game. I, I can't imagine there's a better feeling in the world. Otto Glandorf, 1045 on Sunday morning. They will be in the Division Three state championship. And, you know, we've talked about this. We, we mentioned it in the WOSN selection show we did about six weeks ago. Well, I guess close to two months now. We felt like Ottawa Glandorf had a chance to make a run, that they could really go deep in the tournament. They only have one game left between them and a state championship. Yeah, it's a one-game season for them now, and they're in the place where they were, you know, a year ago or two years ago or whatever, where they are right here. And we can win one more basketball game. It will take an effort like today to win that basketball game, but they are in that spot. Go ahead. Yeah, and you, you got to calm your nerves. Here's the deal. These kids are going to be remembered forever in this school district. 30, 40, 50 years, they're going to be part of a team that played for a state champ. Win or lose, they're going to be part of something so special. And, you know, just seeing Ottawa Glandorf's effort, and, you know, we talked about, we mentioned it very briefly in the beginning, Colin White had a huge game. I think he grew up in a lot of ways tonight. Uh, not even stuff in the stat sheet, but he put up points when they desperately needed it, when they went almost seven minutes without scoring anything. Five blocks, 11 rebounds, 31 points. I think he grew up a lot tonight. Well, I would absolutely agree with that. And here's another good news if you're an OG fan. This is the year where you get a day off in between. So as much energy, if Cal White put 32 minutes on the board, his teammates played exceptionally hard. They get a day to recover. It's not like you got to go Saturday, Sunday. They get to Friday, Sunday venue, and so they're going to get a day off to rest and prepare too. And the pressure that Afrocentric put on Ottawa Glendorf and Colin White and his teammates, they never wavered. There was a few turnovers here and there, but they never seemed to be worried about what was going to happen. They just kept going forward. Even when they were down 10, they kept going forward, and that's a testament to Coach McLaughlin. And he had to be impressed too with the fact that they came they overcame a pretty uh, slow shooting they started about 26 percent first quarter i think they went down to 25 percent at halftime they really came on i think they averaged about 44 45 percent shooting uh, overall and they really came back after the first half uh, they were the only team to make a three-point field goal today too they made four uh afrocentric did not make a three-point field goal those are some huge points right there so just a great performance by them defensively. You saw not just Colin White, but Theo Mag had a great game as far as in the middle of the floor defending the rim. So they look ahead to Sunday. State championship game, 1045. We'll have a recap of that coming up this weekend on WOSN as well. One of the things that you look at is you had Colin White who balled out. You had enough contributions from the other guys to get a win. As a coach, what 
adjustments, what would you say to the guys to get maybe a little bit more of a well-rounded effort from heading into Sunday? Well, well I think at Coach McLaughlin's point right now is, fellas, guess what? We just have to play the game we played today and everybody get maybe a little bit better because they missed a few shots they typically would make. Um, some of those free throws, maybe a three-point field goal. It took Schmink a little bit of while to get going today. But, fellas, we're right there. If we just do what we have done all year long and maybe a little bit better in championship game, we can walk out of here with the big hardware. Yeah, and if I'm Coach McLaughlin, I'm telling my guys, listen, you didn't play very good in the second quarter. You didn't play your best game all year. You got one more opportunity to play your best game, and if it works out, you're going to be a state champion. Titans overcame an 11-point deficit, and because of that, they will play for the Division Three state championship coming up Sunday. And, again, we'll have the recap of that on Sunday night on WOSN. Well, that is going to wrap up the Charles River State Recap Show for today. Tomorrow, we'll have a recap of Antwerp and their game against Tri-Village. Looking forward to that matchup. we got some of the Tri-Village guys sitting here as they take on Antwerp tomorrow. That should be an outstanding matchup, and we look forward to bringing you a recap of that tomorrow. That's going to wrap up our recap. Thank you to Charles River for sponsoring. For Mark Schein, Danny Holbrook, I'm Patrick Kamler. You enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll see you tomorrow from the University of Dayton Arena talking more basketball here on WOSN. Good night.